Hello, everybody. Welcome back to Esoteric Atlanta. Of course, my name is Bryce. Just a quick little channel update. I've literally been filming all day today. As most of you guys know, I was pretty sick this week with some ear issues. So I did not had to take some time off. And so I'm trying to catch back up with everything. And I thank you guys so much for your patience and for your love and support and all your prayers and your good vibes. I really appreciate it. My ears are so much better now. I'm so grateful for the procedure that was done because it really has helped me. I can, I can hear now and I don't have a fever anymore. So that's the good thing. Um, because of my little ear issue this week, uh, this upcoming week, there will be no half hour material or the woman with the alabaster jar that will pick up next week. Um, that is some of the hardest videos for me to edit is because you know, it takes a lot of editing. So, um, so anyway, I just haven't had a chance to film and edit and get them ready for this week because of being at the urgent care and all that stuff. But um, they will be back next week. No, don't worry. They're coming back. They're not going anywhere. Uh, this week, we've got some fun stuff coming up. Uh, we will be looking at, of course, the Emerald Tablets are coming back, Tablet 4. Um, I will be releasing that on Monday morning, probably 7 or 8 a.m. Eastern Time, because I will be going on Aquarius Rising Africa at 9 a.m. Eastern Time. So I want to give you guys a chance to kind of hear the Emerald Tablets a brief discussion over the fourth tablet so that when you join us on Aquarius Rising Africa, it's a live show, you are better prepared to um, talk about your opinion and your perspective. But we're all doing this together, right? So wanted to give you guys a heads up on that. Sarah um, is going to be coming back on the channel this week to do a tea leaf reading for the month of March. And of course, I will have all of her links in that description box for you to book a reading with her. I know a lot of you guys have been booking with her and it's so fascinating, right? The tea leaf reading, that's really fascinating. I believe tomorrow we'll be back on the channel this week too, tentatively. And um, yeah, we've got, I've got, I've got a lot more deep dives that I'm looking at doing. I have been doing the Telegram channel on Thursdays or Fridays, Enough is Enough. And that's been fun. I did a three hour show with them last Thursday. And that was a lot of fun. And somebody like brought up something and I kind of wanted to talk about it because we know that the biggest hold that the controllers have over us is religion. Like that's the Mac daddy of control. And it's because religion deals with your own salvation, your own mortality, your fear of death. And so they have really hook, line and sinker, like got people in their clutches, right? And so somebody asked about like the name Jesus, all this stuff, this, the etymology of these names to try to like wake their friends and families up to the, tr the truth about the church. And we spoke about this for a long time. Now, I will say I'm not, um, I do know that a lot of what I talk about after I start talking about it for a while, websites get taken down. Um, a good a good example of this was the Hess Act. I taught you for a long time. I was doing a lot of information about the Hess Act, which was the act that the Nazi party made with the Pope to propaganda, to, to create a propaganda that um, astrology was bad. That's what the Hess Act was. And so that was kind of like the go-to information for people who still think like astrology, tarot, tarot cards, all these things are bad to go and look at the Hess Act to understand where that idea comes from. Once I started, my friend Emmy was telling me this. Emmy was going, you guys know Emmy, my Reiki friend, she... She was going and like marking all the websites that I was sending her to go back. And then after she went back after a while to look at the website, it was like 404 page not found. So they are taking down a lot of stuff, which is kind of comical. <laughs> like the truth is coming out so fast that they're just like taking websites down so that people still don't understand. Um, I started doing my research accidentally back in 2016. That's a story I've kind of told before. I can tell it again. Started with like a Jordan Maxwell um, conversation that I was stuck listening to because I had oil over my body. So like I had to sit through the whole thing. I couldn't touch my laptop. And that's when I first learned about like the cult of Saturn, all that kind of stuff. And that's what kind of started me on this, this wild goose chase, this rabbit hole of figuring out what the, the truth is. And that lecture by Jordan Maxwell, it took me a while to, to really process everything. It put me in a really, it was like a black pill moment. It put me in a really dark, dark place. And then I started, of course, reading through the missing books of the Bible. And then I found the Tartaria stuff. And so uh, over the years, things have kind of accumulated. My research has accumulated into understanding certain things. Now, first of all, when one does research, I, I want to reiterate how research is done, because I think that we kind of forget 
we've been conditioned by the controllers to basically memorize and regurgitate, memorize and regurgitate, memorize and regurgitate. That's not research. It's not research. What research is, is looking at all these different perspectives, all these different studies, theses, and then coming to your own conclusions. And then presenting, presenting your theories based off of your research, based off of what you learned about events. Okay, so that's how one researches. Now, I was saying, you know, with the whole like crucifixion thing with or the name Jesus, meaning hail Satan, all that kind of stuff. As we kind of talked about it enough and is enough when you're dealing with somebody who is heavily brainwashed in a religion or a cult, because the Christian faith is a cult, you have to be very careful about how you discuss this stuff with that person. You might not want to go in for the kill in the first conversation. You might not want to be like, yo, Jesus wasn't his name and he wasn't crucified. Your friends and family have put their whole salvation and their whole fear and their whole mortality into a particular idea. They put their their trust and their faith into a cult that is controlled by the cabal. So going in and saying like, you know, church means mind control, Jesus means hell, Satan, all that stuff, that's probably not the good place to start. It's going to be harder and harder, but the more we talk about it, the more the cabal is going to freak out and start to hide more and more and more stuff. Where I would start with your friends and family, don't start with that. Like, let let that be for now. Start with like the copyright. Like, why do your why does the Windsor family own the copyright to the Bible? If the Bible is the word of God, then why does the royal family own the copyright to it? Start there. And then maybe talk about the Geneva Bible. I have a whole video on King James. If I I'll put it in the description box below. If you have the NIV Bible, any other variation of the Bible that you have now, it's a variation of the King James. So even though it's not technically the King James Bible, it's coming from the King James Bible, which we know is, is not accurate. You can ask your um, friends and family, why was the Bible edited? Like what I think um, Gordon on Enough is Enough said it's been like 55 times. They know the Bible has been edited. Why does somebody need to edit the word of God? right? Start with those things. Start with like the administrative stuff, like the real logical stuff. That's where I would start. And then let it go for a while and let, let your friends and family kind of wake up on their own. Just like you woke up on your own, just like you went through a journey of figuring things out, let them go on that journey too. You know, because we know, I know, you know, watching that knowing that Yahshua was never crucified, knowing the Bible is a bunch of lies, that's liberating for us, right? Because we we understand that God is so much better and that the God of the Bible is actually Lucifer. And so once you really understand that, there's liberation. Because now you can really, once you see it, you can't see it. And now you can really be in the light and like fear is gone because there is nothing to be afraid of. There is no hell that you have to be afraid of, right? But for your friends and family, they're not there yet. They're still very much emotionally tied to their abuser. It's called trauma bonding. And so I would also suggest that's why that's another reason why I'm bringing on a lot of like cult survivors like Kelly um, from Nexium. We had Grisant Singh, both both of whom will be coming back on the channel. Um, I'm going to be calling out here in a minute for another group that I would love to talk to. And the reason why I'm bringing a lot of these cult survivors on and to talk about their experiences is because regardless of whether it's like a self-help group or a fitness group or a church, a lot of the coercive control, a lot of the brainwashing is done. It's the same. So I would highly suggest for everybody who still has loved ones that are still very brainwashed by the church to just kind of study coercive control, study cult behavior to understand what's been done to your loved ones and understand that your loved ones are a victim of mind control. All right. And it's scary. It's, it's easy to understand that the educational system is fucked up and medicine. I mean, that's, it's not dealing with your salvation. It's not dealing with your spirit, right? With the church or with any religion, it's dealing, dealing with that person's spirit and their soul. And so there's a there's a, a, a greater grip onto that. And so they trauma bond with their abuser. And so you then become the enemy because you're trying to break that up, that you don't want your loved one to be victimized by the abuser anymore. And so you're coming in with the best of intention being like, hey, guess what? 
you know, Aunt Martha, look, Yahshua was never crucified. Yay. We don't have any sins to pay for. Like we are already good. God's already inside of us. You think you want your loved one to be excited too and to realize they don't have to live in fear and they don't have to pay penance to this cult. But that's not how they're seeing it because their whole life they've been conditioned by the cult to be faithful to the cult. And so you're coming in, you're going to be labeled as the enemy. Okay. So, and I know I've made this mistake a, a bunch with people in my life. I know a lot of you have as well. So for now, you know, God knows their heart. The real God knows their heart. And so for now, I would just start with the real easy stuff, the copyright. You know, oh, look, that's interesting. The Windsors own the Bible. That's interesting, right? Like, why do the Windsors own the Bible? Show them my video on King James or you watch my video on King, King James and then go find these websites and show them the websites that shows King James was a master mason. You know, these are just places where I would start now looking back because hindsight is twenty twenty. Once they start to wake up and once they start to realize, then you can slowly start to move into. I would start with the Old Testament. Interesting. Why is Abraham doing human sacrifices? Why is Jacob doing human sacrifices? Why do they have so many wives and concubines? That's not, that's trafficking. Like that's not, it's not what God wants us to do. Why? And then you can build up to, would the real God of light and creation ever demand for a blood sacrifice? Then you can go to the Mac Daddy, which is the crucifixion. You can even talk about Tammuz and Ishtar, but slowly, slowly, like don't start with that stuff. Right? At least that's my best advice to give now. Because that was a question that was asking after making many mistakes. Now, with that being said, on my channel, we're going full, full force. And I'm not holding back on my channel because people don't have to watch if they don't want to. And my channel is a place of research and a place for us to, to, to figure the truth out together and exploration. And so, you know, all you watching on my channel, we're all on the same page. We're all like, wait a minute, what does the earth even, even look like? Right? Um, so, so, but with your loved ones in your life, that's just kind of my advice. Now, also with that being said, I know I get attacked by fundamentalists a lot. Um, I know that they come in, um, and try to, you know, shout Bible verses at me, which I find hysterical because that's, that's satanic. Um, but here's the thing. And I'm preaching to the choir right now. I'm not going to tolerate on my channel abuse. I'm not going to tolerate aggression. I understand that this stuff is hard to hear. Totally get that. It's really hard to hear. If what I say triggers you, that's a you problem. That's not a me problem. That's not a anybody else in the comment section problem. That's a you problem. And it's okay to be triggered. Your triggers are like your golden lotto tickets. But if you lash out at me, or if you lash out at any of my subscribers here, my friends here, you will be blocked. Because we don't play that way. Everybody needs to be respectful of everyone. All right. Even if this stuff is hard to hear and you have a question, you're more than welcome to ask that question. But you need to be respectful in the way that you ask it, which most of you are. I'm talking to like 1% of the people who aren't. Another thing, even though I'm a YouTuber, I don't live on YouTube. So if I don't answer, if you ask a question and I don't answer right away, it's because I'm not on the internet. So I don't see your question. You're going to have to be patient. So be patient and just wait for me to, to uh, when I, if I see your question, I'll respond. But don't go and aggressively just quote a bunch of, put in a bunch, a bunch, a bunch of comments with Bible verses, aggressively trying to get people's attention because that's, that's not healthy for anyone. It's not healthy for anyone to be living on YouTube anyway. You know, if I'm not on the internet, if I'm at my desk, I'm usually editing to put more videos up or, or whatever. Or I'm out with my dog. And so you're going to have to just be a little bit patient, you know, and if you find that you can't be patient, you feel that aggression coming up again, maybe take a walk, ask your question and then go take a walk or go listen to some music, do something to like transmute that energy because you lashing out at me or at somebody else in the comment section because you're triggered by the subject that we're talking about. Again, that's a you problem. That's not a me problem. 
That's not somebody else's. That's a you problem. That's a you problem. And we're all human. We all have problems that we have to work through, but you don't want to lash out. And if you are lashing out and you're doing it in the name of God, then I would ask you to consider what God are you actually worshiping and serving? Because the God that I serve is not a God that would lash out. And again, I know this is very sensitive stuff. I totally get that. It's about your spirit. And if what I say is too much, if my research is too much for you right now, it's totally fine. You could, you don't have to watch me for a while. In fact, I've gotten a couple of messages where people said, I stopped watching you for a while and then I woke up more and now I'm binging your stuff again. And that's great. Go at your own pace. It's okay to go at your own pace. But do not project onto other people because that's just building more karma for you. Right? Do un If you want to quote the Bible, do unto others as you would have them do unto you. Yeah? All right. So also we're coming up. We're getting into like the getting close to like day 40. Let me find here. I want to share with you guys the 60 day challenge. Sorry, I am moving stuff around while I talk to you guys here. I'm processing a video right now. So let's look here at the 60 day challenge coming up. All right, let's just start with Sunday, February 26. I don't know when this channel update is going to be dropped. But so if this is past Sunday, I, I, um, I apologize. So new addition to the challenge since you're at the halfway mark, make up your bed every morning, your last meal should be between five and 7pm. No snacking after 7 p.m. as this allows your digestive system to rest so your blood has a chance to cleanse and heal other organs such as your skin. So that's coming up. Um, normally, this is Sunday, Sunday, but we're going to take some time to prepare for your week ahead of dealing with grief, which is what Emmy wrote. Emmy did a lot with, grie with grief. So I say today you can take, um, do beginners, uh, the, the sun salutations, the warm up today. If you want, you can take a 30 to 60 minute walk alone. I want you not to listen to anything while you walk and try not to talk to anyone else while you walk. If you have your child with you, that's okay. While on this walk, I want you to go at a speed that gets your heart rate up. I want you to pay attention to your breath. Watch every inhale and every exhale. Don't judge, just watch it. While doing this movement, I want you to notice the stillness that is in your body. I know that sounds like opposing ideas, movement and stillness, but what I'm trying to do is to get you into your subtle body response while the gross body is in movement. I want you to watch the thoughts that come up. Don't attach to them, just observe them with no judgment. While on this walk, does any emotional pain come up? If so, again, just notice it, but don't attach to it. Or if you want, you can practice with me um, at Sacred Garden, my Sacred Garden class. Meditation, we have Reiki with Emmy. Um, during your shower, try to do five minutes of cold water. Um, video to watch, prepare for the upcoming week of grief. Dancing in the shadows right there. Your food journal to understand your doshas. And your journal. How do you feel about walking in silence? Are you afraid of your own silence? How do we as humans use noise and chatter to distract ourselves or escape from the uncomfortable thoughts or feelings that arise? How did you feel watching your breath? Did your breath provide any information about your subtle body? There are no wrong answers here. How are you feeling about the week ahead and having to face grief? Look three people in the eyes and smile. And of course, the typical evening routine. We'll go ahead and look at Monday, February 27th. Of course, no snacking after 5 p.m. Make your head up. Make your, make, make your head up. Make your bed up. Uh, once again, you've got your warm up and you've got your sun salutations. Exercise. Now, if you are doing Shanti's exercise, Shanti's 27 or 21 day uh, sun salutation, you can do that and do this if you want to. It's totally up to you. Uh, again, if you want to do the 21 day sun salutation challenge, just email me at shadowworkchallenge at gmail.com. It's never too late to start, even if it's past Monday, no big deal. Exercises. For your exercise today, you're going to do a 60 minute class from Cindy at Sacred Garden Yoga in Marietta, Georgia, a suburb of Atlanta. Cindy is a healer and uses Anusara yoga as a way to transmute healing. Anusara comes from Ayingard yoga, one of the traditional lineages of yoga. This form of yoga is very different from Ashtanga. It's a little lighter in its execution. During the 60 minutes, I want you to focus on the heart and hip portion of the healing as the heart and the hips tend to carry more grief and pain than other locations. So I have a link here. Meditation. So you, again, with the sun salutation challenge with Shanti for the first week, I believe you're doing 36 sun salutations. So you can, 
if you are if you have the physical fitness and you want to you can do the 36 sun salutations and then do uh cindy's class here totally fine meditation uh you can do sound bone healing or on meditation or chakra healing your choice taking your cold shower once again you're going to be doing a food journal to watch how your body reacts to food Journal questions to ask from Emmy, day one of grief, shock and disbelief are a significant loss, such as a loved one passing over, a rape relationship ending, loss of a job, loss of health or loss of health in a loved one, etc. Is a natural defense mechanism humans have initially after a loss, so that's shock and disbelief. It allows us to handle the administrative task like planning a funeral, making arrangements for help or finding another job. Some people may question your lack of emotion and question your empathy. It is okay to feel numb. It is normal and there is nothing wrong with you. Your nervous system may enter fight or flight for an extended period. It can be difficult to eat, sleep, think, or make decisions. Journal prompts. After a significant loss, how did your mind body initially respond? How did the people around you at that time help or hinder the stage? From me. After working through Emmy's prompts, how did Cindy's class help you get in touch with the information in your mind and body? Where in your life have you gone through shock over something tragic? Does it make you feel better to know that your shock response was and is normal? Can you forgive yourself for any judgment you ha may have held on yourself for your numbness to the shock at the time? Once again, look three people in the eyes and smile. Same evening routine. So let's go ahead and look at Tuesday. And then starting on day 40, I'm going to bring Emmy on and we're going to go through this again with you guys as well. So same, uh, make your bed up. Don't eat after seven. Same old warm up and sun salutations. Once again, you're going to be doing the same heart and hip class with Cindy. Same picking what a different meditation or the same meditation. Same food journal from Emmy. Day two of grief work. Denial is another natural defense mechanism to protect ourselves from the pain of the loss. We can deny the loss altogether or deny our feelings around it. Journaling prompts from Emmy. Where did you experience denial after a loss? What did that look like? Did you suppress your emotions? Did you deny the loss entirely? Did you exhibit any sort of irritational behavior? If so, what did you say or do? Note that this is all very normal. Please do not feel ashamed of anything you have done or said from me. Today, I had you repeat the same exercises yesterday with Cindy's hip and heart opener. You will repeat the same tomorrow as well. How was the class different today than yesterday? Was there any new information that came up today? New information from body, especially when it comes to grief or anger. Or new information from the body, especially when it comes to grief or anger or pain around grief. Which meditation did you pick yesterday and today? Why? How is your experience with meditation changing? What has pain and grief taught you so far? Can you take a moment to address pain and grief inside you and ask it what it wants to tell you? Are the cold showers helping you in this process of confronting your shadow? What have you learned from the cold showers? Look three people in the people in the eye and smile. Same closing of the day. And again, so we will, since this is the week of grief, we will go back with Emmy and go through more of this later this week. Now, to end, I am looking for somebody or a couple of somebodies who grew up or converted to the LDS uh, Mormon church. I, I would like to go deep into Mormonism and talk about it. I have definitely uh, read the Book of Mormon. I read the Book of Mormon many years ago, not to become a Mormon. I was just curious. I just wanted to know what Mormons believed. That's why I read the Book of Mormon. Found it very interesting. Now, um, as far as someone like Joseph Smith, I've kind of had a question mark over him for a while. Uh, I did, though, while I was sick, spend some time looking into his polygamy and into his wives, which I'd never done before. I always felt a lot of empathy for Emma Smith. Um, and I just kind of assumed the other women, which was wrong of me, were just kind of down for it. But I spent some time looking through a lot of their journal entries and a lot of their writings and what was going on at the time. And I realized most of these women were coerced into this. And this was a form of trafficking. I know a lot of um, people will say, oh, back in that, in that time, it was normal for a 37 year old to marry a 16 year old. No, it wasn't. And I, I listened to a huge report on this in the 1800s census it was typically women got married at the age of 22 men around the age of 26 so it, it was more similar to what we find acceptable in in this day and age so a 16 year old at that point was still considered a child and that was still considered taboo for 
a man 20 years older to her than her to marry her. And so I, I, you know, when we look at the Tartarian stuff, um, it, 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 there's a lot of questions I have around. It. And of course, a lot of uh, Mormonism is based off of Freemasonry. A lot of the rituals are Freemason rituals. And so I would like to explore that with um, somebody, uh, you know, in the audience. You know, we've talked a lot about the Christian faith, which Mormonism is a offshoot of Christianity. Um, I, there's a channel I follow of a person who's left Mormonism and they call Mormonism the fan fiction of Christianity. So um, I would love for if you are one of those people that wants to come on and talk about your experience in the Mormon church, um, we can talk about legitimacy of Joseph Smith. We can talk about, you know, was Joseph Smith created by the controllers or was he just a psychopath, narcissist? Who knows? I don't know. Um, but I do know that there were definitely um, reading these journal entries by these women that were forced to marry him. I there is no doubt in my mind that he was a psychopath. No, no doubt in my mind. And so he was a key for Neri, like from Nexium. Um, reading these women's journal entries was heartbreaking. It was really hard to do. And then I watched a lot of people talk about them, and it, and it got very emotional for me because these were very innocent women who were forced into a, a situation coerced into a situation and so you know i would like to do a series on that um so if somebody is uh willing to to talk about it and wants to come on and, and talk about you know there's debate some people will classify mormonism as a cult um some won't you know so we can talk about that as well um so yeah just let me know if that if you're interested in being that person i would love to have you on all right you guys i hope you're doing well and i will talk to you soon